name is Katrin Eichelberg. I'm a program officer with the Division of Microbiology and Infectious Diseases as at the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the NIH. As a program officer, I oversee a portfolio of grants and contracts in TB immunology and TB vaccines. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you today and looking forward to the discussion. So today I'm gonna to present to you an overview of recent advances in TB vaccine research. Just a few words in terms of background. Microbacterium tuberculosis, the causative agent of TB, has the sad record of being the leading cause of death from a single infectious agent. Clearly in 2020, this has been surpassed by SARS-CoV-2. Nevertheless, in 2019, an estimated 10 million people contracted TB and about 1.4 million people died, including 208,000 deaths among HIV positive people. We have a vaccine, BCG, it's 100 years old. And neonatal BCG vaccination is widely used and partially efficacious at protecting infants and young children against severe forms of TB. However, it is poorly protective against pulmonary disease in adolescents and adults. An upsurge in multi-drug resistant strains of MTB is leading to a loss of therapeutic options. And vaccines that either prevent the initial MTB infection or prevent transition from latent to active TB are urgently needed. The development of effective vaccines for TB has been challenging due to the complexity of the pathogen. And recent findings in animal models and human clinical trials provide promising signs that improved TB vaccination strategies are indeed uh, achievable. TB has a broad disease spectrum, and this slide shows a figure with the different stages of TB and the different methods of diagnostics to assess the disease. So it starts out with the initial infection of the bacteria encountering a host via inhalation, which can lead to latent uh, infection, uh, progress to subclinical disease, and uh, up to active pulmonary symptomatic disease. And these classifications here are typically used to drive treatment options. It's a dynamic disease and the development of improved diagnostics, their vaccines and therapeutics requires a much more detailed understanding of the interplay of the bacteria and the host biology. And a patient can progress from, for example, from latent disease to subclinical disease and revert back spontaneously. The factors that lead to the control or progression to active disease are not fully understood. And there's clearly a need to improve our understanding of host immune responses required to either eliminate or control the disease um, and uh, that's what we hope to do. There are a few different um, vaccine strategies for TB vaccine use, and there are four potential indications for TB vaccine development. The potential target mechanism of action for new vaccination strategies may include prophylactic intervention, which could be preventing uh, the establishment of the infection early or preventing the establishment of latent disease. So you could either clear the bacteria right as the host encounters it very rapidly or um, clear um, the establishment of, as I said, the latent disease. It could also include the prevention of progression from latent to active pulmonary disease. And this is sometimes also referred to as a post-exposure vaccine strategy. There's a whole other category, sorry. There's a whole other category that is TB vaccines as immunotherapy. As you know, treating TB requires a multi-drug course of treatment lasting at least six months or longer for TB resistant, for drug resistant TB. 
treatment failure and recurrence after end of treatment can have devastating consequences, including continued transmission by the patient or development of drug resistance. And recurrence can occur either due to reactivation of incompletely eliminated initial infecting organisms or from reinfection. And reports of reoccurrence rates vary, but they're often between 2 and 15%. Most recurrence occur between six months and two years of completing treatment. So TB vaccines also have the potential to serve as immunotherapeutic adjuncts to antibiotic treatment regimens for TB. And a therapeutic vaccine would be administered at certain times during treatment and could improve outcomes through immune-mediated control and even clearance of bacteria and potentially preventing reinfection, thus providing an opportunity to shorten and simplify drug treatment regimens. This would be especially important for treatment of drug-resistant TB. As I just highlighted, there are different strategies for TB vaccine use and various indications for novel TB vaccine candidates determine design of clinical trials. For example, um, the assessment of the prevention of disease endpoint requires a large sample size and long duration of follow-up, which consequently, consequently drives up the cost for such trial. And we'll talk about some of these different um, examples here of the prevention of infection, prevention of disease, and prevention of recurrence as we go through some specific trial examples. The WHO has set some preferred product characteristics for new TB vaccines, and a few selected points are listed here. Reaching the WHO NTB strategy targets will require a new vaccine that is effective at preventing adult TB, and it's considered a critical need. Both adolescents and adults represent a key reservoir and source of TB transmission, and they are the primary contributors to the overall disease burden. According to this guidance, any new, new vaccine should have greater than 50% efficacy with a long duration of protection and minimal number of doses. Of course, TB, new TB vaccines should also be safe for use in HIV-infected individuals, given the extensive overlap between TB and HIV epidemics. A second objective is developing an affordable TB vaccine for neonates and infants with improved safety and efficacy as compared to BCG, basically a BCG replace, replacement strategy. Here I just uh, would like to mention an important diagnostic test that being used in TB related research is the IGRA contraferon assay. And I'm mentioning it here because it will come up later when we talk about specific trial examples. It's the quiogen contraferon assay, which is a simple blood assay with high specificity. It's an interferon gamma release assay, commonly known as an IGRA contraferon QFT and measures the cell-mediated immune response to specific secreted TB antigens in whole blood. It's an alternative to the tuberculin skin test, and unlike TST, it's unaffected by previous BCG vaccination. Just to keep in mind, the QFT test cannot distinguish between active disease and latent TB infection, and is just intended for risk assessment. There are a number of challenges in TB vaccine-related research, and this uh, list uh, highlights a number of these key challenges, especially in preclinical research. There is a lack of correlates of protection. The um, animal models have limited predictive value. As we talked about, MTB elicits a spectrum of disease, and the definitive protective antigens are not known. We don't have a robust functional assay that measures biological responses to a vaccine. 
we do not have a human challenge model and the charge is to identify a better vaccine than BCG. This slide is a graph showing the current status of the global clinical TB vaccine pipeline. And shown in the different shades of blue and purple are the different vaccine categories reflecting the core approaches, including protein adjuvant vaccine, virally vectored vaccines, whole cell vaccines, either as a life attenuated vaccine or other inactivated mycobacterial strains. And just to add in um, terms of the virally vectored or adjuvanted protein approaches of note, currently only a limited selection of antigens is incorporated in these vaccine approaches. Now switching over to some great progress which has been made in TB vaccine related clinical trials and this highlights two recent uh, publications from two phase to B clinical trials that provided new evidence that an effective vaccine to protect against MTB infection or progression to active disease is indeed possible. And here we'll have one example for a prevention of infection trial and a prevention of disease trial. And we go into some more detail with both of those trials. This publication refers to the phase two study of an adjuvanted subunit vaccine, the H4IC31 and BCG revaccination of an adolescent cohort. And this trial is often referred to only as the BCG revaccination trial. I listed in the slide, there are a few details about this trial. It's a randomized phase two study to evaluate the safety and immunogenicity and prevention of infection with mycobacterium tuberculosis of H4 IC31 and BCG vaccination in healthy adolescents. In essence, this is a phase two prevention of infection trial with three arms the adjuvanted vaccine, BCG, and a placebo. The adjuvanted vaccine, H4IC31, is a recombinant fusion protein, and IC31, a TLR4 agonist, which is given in two doses intramuscularly. And the study population are healthy South African adolescents without MTB infection assessed by a negative contraferon test and um, BCG vaccinated at birth. Of note here is almost 3,000 participants had to be screened in order to enroll 990 participants in the study. And the end point here is again, safety, immunogenicity and prevention of the initial and sustained quantiferon conversion uh, with the follow-up schedule of up to 24 months, two years. So in terms of safety, there were no clinically significant differences between uh, the different groups and the rates of serious adverse events, although mild to moderate injection site reactions were more common in BCG revaccination group, which is not uh, surprising. And in terms of immunogenicity, both BCG and H4IC31 uh, vaccines were both immunogen immunogenic. Quantiferon conversion was monitored in six months interval for two years. And looking at the initial rate of quantiferon conversion representing MTB infection, both vaccines actually did not meet the primary objective. However, sorry, looking at the secondary outcome, the participants receiving either vaccine had a lower rate of sustained conversion, uh, sustained QFT conversion rate, meaning some of the participants who had initial positive contraferon tests reverted back to a contraferon negative test. And here it was the vaccine at, at a efficacy point at about 30% and for BCG revaccination at 45%. 
So the conclusions that were drawn from this trial is that the rate of sustained contraferon conversion, which may reflect sustained MTB infection, was indeed reduced by vaccination in a high transmission setting. It also showed for the first time that the approach of a prevention of infection trial is a meaningful model to test TB vaccine efficacy. And while it did not meet the original criteria, the results of the subunit vaccine suggest the potential for other subunit vaccines to be tested. And since BCG revaccination re showed uh, protection, uh, pre prevention of disease trial is needed and will be conducted by the Gates Medical Research Institute in a multi-center study. This slide shows the publication of another exciting TB phase to B efficacy trial. And this is the M72 ASO1 vaccine. So again, a few details about this trial. It's a phase two B efficacy trial of the GSK M72 ASO1E TB vaccine in adults in endemic countries. And the vaccine again is here a recombinant fusion protein derived from two immunogenic MTB antigens combined with the ASO1 adjuvant system that's also being used in Shingrix. The study population here are HIV negative adults uh, with latent TB infection, so they're IGRA positive, and most had received neonatal BCG vaccination. The vaccine is given in two doses intramuscularly. The endpoint here is efficacy against progression to bacteriologically confirmed active pulmonary disease. So this is a prevention of disease trial with a three year follow-up. And again, the numbers of participants are quite remarkable and they had to screen over 8,000 uh, participants in order to enroll, enroll a total of about 3,570 adults. And any of the participants with clinical suspicion of pulmonary TB provided three sputum samples that were further analyzed by PCR and liquid culture. And what they found after the three-year follow-up, 13 participants in the vaccine arm um, met the primary case definition as compared with 26 participants in the placebo group, which leads to um, an outcome that demonstrates a vaccine efficacy at three months of about 50% protection against pulmonary disease. So this result engendered lots of excitement in the TB vaccine field and is being follow up further. And correlates of protection studies are currently underway for both the M72 and the BCG revaccination trial. Coming back to the global TB vaccine clinical pipeline, highlighted here in yellow circles are a few noteworthy candidates that also represent different categories of vaccine approaches. There's VPM1002, which is a recombinant BCG strain. And in general, this is an approach that is being pursued by a number of investigators in the preclinical space here, the general idea is that improving a vaccine, BCG, that we know works well um, in infants and to further improve on that. The next category is a live attenuated MTB derivative, MTB-VAC. The advantage here of a wholesale vaccine is that it carries many, if not most of the antigens of the original infecting pathogen. And again, an approach that is being pursued also by other investigators in the preclinical space in different permutations. And the third candidate, ID93 GLASE is another adjuvanted subunit vaccine that is advancing in the clinical pipeline. So we'll talk about those um, in a little bit more detail. 
Again, VPM 1002, a recombinant BCG strain. And it expresses um, secreted listerilisin, which enables the recombinant bacteria to escape from the phagosome of infected host cells and directs mycobacterial antigens to the MHC pathway, MHC class one pathway, and thereby eliciting a broader immune response. So typically uh, bacteria would be contained mostly in the phagosome leading to largely class two MHC class two presentation by escaping the phagosome uh, again, uh, allowing also for MHC class one presentation. And there are two active trials, both of them conducted in India. One is a phase three trial to evaluate efficacy and safety of VPM 102 in comparison with BCG in prevention of MTB infection of newborn infants. And again, this includes a large number of participants. The second trial, the multi-center trial is, to, is a prevention of recurrence trial. And here uh, the goal is to study and to evaluate the efficacy and safety of VPM in the prevention of TB recurrence in pulmonary TB patients after successful TB treatment. MTB-VAC, as I mentioned, is a live attenuated MTB strain. And it's um, by genetically engineering two independent unmarked stable mutations in, vir in essential virulence genes. And there are two trials in South Africa using this live attenuated TB vaccine approach. Both are safety and immunogenicity dose escalation studies, one in adults and one in neonates. And initial results have shown that MTB-VAC had acceptable reactogenicity and induced a durable CD4 T cell response in infants. It was also reported that this vaccine interfered with the common quantiferon IGRA test and dose related IGRA conversion was noted in some of the infants which means that additional endpoint definitions will need to be determined for future trials of this vaccine candidate. Then here we have uh, ID93, um, it's an adjuvanted subunit vaccine. And it's again, a fusion protein comprised of four MTB proteins combined with an adjuvant consisting of, the, of, of a synthetic TLR4 agonist. And the first trial listed here was conducted in South Africa and is a, is a safety and immunogenicity study in TB patients who have just completed TB treatment and are being vaccinated with ID93. The study was just published and the vaccine was reported to be safe and immunogenic for all tested regimens and supports further evaluation of ID93, GLASE, and therapeutic vaccination strategies to improve TB treatment outcomes, moving towards a prevention of recurrence trauma and potentially also therapeutic intervention. The second trial is an immunogenicity and efficacy study of ID93 in BCG vaccinated contraferon negative healthy healthcare workers in South Korea. Fortunately, I'm running out of time, but, but just to highlight a few recent preclinical advances in TB vaccines. Uh, here are listed three seminal studies that if you're interested in, in TB vaccines and what's happening in the preclinical space, these uh, are certainly exciting public, public, public publications to uh, follow up. To close on uh, optimistic note here, TB vaccine strategies are achievable. While TB vaccine research and development remains a challenge, results of the recent clinical trials are highly encouraging and correlates of protection studies are underway. 
Recent progress in preclinical studies generated optimism in the TB community. And there is certainly a great need for funding for efficacy trials and licensure of promising TB vaccine candidates. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>